Yeah, so we've come to the last session and uh, we'll just pick up from where we left off in our you know, last class and, uh, and then close with maybe uh, if you have any questions on whatever we have covered so far, um, that you, we can you can feel free to ask. We can, you know, we can discuss, we can talk about that. Uh, I also thought we'll um, go through the, the document, uh, you know, where uh, people enter the questions and um, and see if there's any question which is left unanswered uh, i it's highly unlikely i think uh, our course would have the course would have covered uh, you know all the questions um, that you might have uh, put up regarding the holy spirit uh, about the subject of the holy spirit so um, yeah but anyway we will we will go through that also right so um, let me just uh, yeah put up the notes and uh, and look at what we, yeah. Okay, so we were looking at um, the names uh, which are there in scripture uh, about the Holy Spirit, right? Names uh, by which the Holy Spirit is, or names or titles uh, which are given to the Holy Spirit. And uh, we were looking at a few of them, uh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, etc. So uh, these names actually, uh, like we said, it uh, gives us insight about the ways of the Holy Spirit or the functioning of the Holy Spirit or the nature and characteristic of the Holy Spirit. You know, different aspects or different facets of the working and the nature of uh God, the Holy Spirit, right? So it's it's good to go through and um, and see uh, what these titles are. So we looked at a few of them um, uh, last class, the Spirit of the Lord, and so on. Um, so we see. Uh, I just want to read, a, pick up a few of it, few of them, uh, and uh, you know, look at some of these uh, scriptures here. Um, but I just want to um, encourage us to maybe go through the entire list and spend some time meditating on these um, titles, right? Um, I think we stopped here, Spirit of His Son, uh, in the last class. Let's look at um, Romans 8, 14, and 15. Okay, Romans 8, 14, verses 14 and 15. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the Spirit of bondage again to fear but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we call out we cry out abba father uh, also verse 16 the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god so you know he's called the spirit of adoption uh, which means that he makes this whole process of um, those who are not children of God, he brings us into that process of making us children of God. So that is why he's called the spirit of adoption. Um, and verse 16 talks about how um, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So in this whole process of um, bringing us, drawing us and making us children of God, uh, you know, we are adopted into the family of God. Um, and the Holy Spirit is the one who does that, uh, carries out that work of adoption and testifies to the ones who are adopted. You know, you are a child of God. Right? That is what the Holy Spirit does. So he's called the spirit of adoption. So you see this title talks about what he does in, um, in uh, bringing uh, those who are far off uh, into the family of God, right? those who are rejected, having no hope, um, uh, not knowing the truth, uh, not born again, they are actually brought. Uh, and of course, we see that he is the one who, um, you know, uh, who brings about um, the whole process of regeneration as well. Right? Uh, he's also called the spirit of glory. He's called the spirit of grace. Uh, maybe we, we look at that Hebrews 10. Um, and verse, verses 28 and 29, Hebrews 10, 28 and 29 says, um, anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment 
do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? Insulted the Spirit of grace. So he, here the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of grace, the one who uh, extends or brings about the grace of God uh, into our lives. Right. Um, so, uh, of course, the context of this particular passage is uh, one who rebels against God, one who rejects the law of God and is uh, comparing with the Old Testament um, uh, law or Moses law and one who rejects uh, you know, the a consequence of that, the outcome of that. Uh, here, while talking about the spirit of God, uh, he's also, you know, the writer of Hebrews is also talking about you know, it's greater, the consequence is much greater when you reject the spirit of grace, right? You, um, or uh, the, the punishment is eternal, right? When, when you reject the spirit of grace. Um, not only that, but also, you know, rejecting salvation itself, right? Son of God, underfoot, and so on. So he's called the spirit of grace, uh, the one who brings about the grace of God uh, into our lives, a revelation of the grace of God into our lives and extends the grace of God into our lives. Right? And he's also called the spirit of grace and supplication in right? Zechariah 12, uh, 10. Um, we know that he helps us to pray by whom we call out Abba Father. He, he enables us to pray. He enables us to worship. Uh, we worship by the spirit. Right? Um, so, you know, he's called the spirit of grace and of uh, supplication. He's called the spirit of wisdom and understanding, which means he, uh, you know, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 11 talks about that. Talks about, uh, maybe we can read Isaiah 11, uh, which talks about the uh, seven characteristics um, or seven uh, facets of the Holy Spirit. Um, Isaiah 11. Okay, here it is, Isaiah 11. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Okay, so verse 2, the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, so he's called the Spirit of the Lord, uh, referring to the Holy Spirit. The, whole, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, uh, referring to the Messiah. So uh, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord so we see um, seven aspects um, in verse two um, and all these seven aspects or characteristics are pertaining to the holy spirit right spirit of the lord spirit of wisdom spirit of understanding spirit of counsel spirit of might spirit of knowledge and spirit of the fear of the lord so um, we we see this um, he is, of course, uh, called, of course, the Spirit of Life, Spirit of Holy Spirit of Promise. Um, the Holy Spirit of Promise. That title is uh, kind of an indirect uh, title. If you read the references, you see that. Um, uh, maybe we can read that. You know, John fourteen and verse twenty six. Um, John fourteen, verse twenty six says, "And the Helper." The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you uh, all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So here he's, um, you know, he's referred to, the Holy Spirit is actually referred to, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is referred to as the as the promise of the Father, right? Uh, the Lord Jesus and he was, uh, uh, teaching his disciples and instructing them to wait in Jerusalem. He asked them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, uh, when the Holy Spirit will baptize them, and and here he's he's actually teaching on uh, uh, the disciples on what the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, what he will accomplish. Uh, here he's saying, you know, he will teach you, bring to your remembrance the things that I said to you, and so on. If you look at uh, uh, chapter 15 and verse 26, the same thing. You know, um, when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So he's talking about uh, the promise of the Father 
and uh, what he will do, uh, the, uh, the promise of the Father referring to the Holy Spirit, and what the Holy Spirit will carry out and what he will do um, uh, when he when he comes and when he uh, in, when he indwells people, right? uh, in, indwells the the believer. So he's called the Spirit of Truth, which means truth is a characteristic. Truth is, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a very uh, uh, it is a very core uh, uh, the nature of God, uh, of the Holy Spirit. So he's holy. He's a Spirit of Truth, which means he does not lie. And these are, and these are. Uh, you know, amazing characteristics, right? Um, which which really bring faith to a person. Right? Uh, when you consider that the spirit of truth is leading me, right? The spirit of truth is teaching me, and the spirit of truth is bringing to remembrance the things that he has taught me, which means that uh, you know, he is he is speaking the truth, right? Um, and he cannot but speak the truth. He he will not be deceitful, or he will not speak lies, which is a great comfort for us as believers. Right? And so we can really trust him and put our faith in him 100%, if not more, because he is the spirit of truth. He's also the comforter. He comes to comfort us, strengthen us, uh, and you know several other things that he does. So, um, so when you consider all the titles, all these titles, you can go through this entire list um, that we have in the notes and see that um, uh, well, the different aspects of the Holy Spirit, and really thank Him for who He is. That uh, we can actually take some time to uh, you know read uh, and meditate on the 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 function the role and the function of the holy spirit according to the title of the holy spirit and then say god i i thank you for this i thank you for this i i'd like to see uh, your work in my life in this aspect you know maybe it's something to do with the truth maybe it's something to do with uh, uh you know whatever you that you see lord i i want to be taught by you uh, i want to, uh, you know the enemy try has tried to discourage me and and rob me of all those revelations and truths that you put in my life. Um, but I, Lord, help me to uh, remember, Lord, teach me, remind me of those things that, that you've already uh, shown me. And, you know, the Holy Spirit of promise, uh, the, the several aspects of, you know, the grace, the adoption. Um, yes, Lord, you know, I'm, uh, I thank you that I'm part of the family, but um, Lord, can you just make, can you just show me that? Um, or teach me that, or make those things real to me uh, in in my spirit, uh, so that I will be unshakable, so that I will know, you know, that I, I will not go out, go around with a, you know, spirit of uh, bondage or uh, with an idea of bondage, with a mindset of bondage, or even uh, with a with a rejection mindset, right? But I will go with confidence and with the assurance that you have, uh, uh, you know, adopted me. That you are the spirit of adoption. You have, I'm part of your uh, family. I'm part of the family of God. So, so these are some things that, uh, um, you know, that we can do. We can take this word. We can meditate on the on the work, uh, the nature, the title of the Holy Spirit, and thank Him. Right? Okay. Um, lastly, we look at some of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. You know, similar to the titles. Now, when we study the symbols, uh, he's referred to as, uh, you know, he's like this. He he came upon people like this. So, which means that when you take uh, symbols as the term applies, it is symbolic. It is it is not literal. It is symbolic, which means the Holy Spirit is like the rain but the rain is not the spirit of god okay so he's like the the natural fire but fire itself uh, you know is not spirit so we of course you know we know the difference uh, but the fact is that um, uh, you know the, he, that he is like that he does uh, some of the work that he does is like what rain would you know, uh, come and accomplish what fire would accomplish. Right? So we see that he's referred to as the dove. You know, uh, we see uh, that even at the uh, baptism of the Lord Jesus, when John baptizes, heavens are open, 
we hear the voice of the Father and the Holy Spirit alighted uh, like a dove, right, is, is what uh, it says. So um, a dove, you know, they say that dove is one of the species of birds which does not have a gall bladder and gall uh, is symbolic of bitterness. We don't have to read too many, too much into that, but uh, the fact is that um, he's gentle like the dove, uh, uh, and uh, uh, he comes and alights. It, it dove also, you know, uh, globally, it it's, uh, stands as a, a symbol of peace and so on. Right. So is like is referred to is symbolic uh, of the Holy Spirit, the dove. Then we see um, is like the wind, right? Um, when the Lord Jesus has the conversation uh, with, uh, 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 with with the ruler of the synagogue in John chapter 3. Um, let's probably go there. Okay, um, so Nicodemus is there. The Lord is talking to him, uh, John chapter 3, and uh, he's asking that question about born again. Um, so the Lord gives him a response and um, he talks about the wind um, and then he says you know so is everyone that is born of the spirit okay so the wind is also uh, a symbolic of the work of the spirit like the wind in fact the lord says the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes right so there is it is tangible the work that the spirit of God does, uh, but how and you know the outworking of it, the exact details of it, we don't know. But the spirit of God does the work of transformation, does the work of a person being born again. Right. So, um, so he's referring to that. So he's referred to uh, uh, as the wind, and and of course we see in the um, when the church was born like in the book of Acts when we read about the church, um, they heard the sound of a rushing wind when they were baptized by the Holy Spirit. And so literally they actually heard the sound of a rushing wind. So wind, again, symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Uh, rain is also referred to, um, the Holy Spirit also, uh, uh, you know, uh, referred to as, uh, or sorry, uh, rain is a symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, Joel 2.23, uh, there's a reference um, of uh, the Holy Spirit, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That, and Jose also, we, we read about that. He will come like the rain, um, like the former and the latter rain. Right? So what the rain does, the work of refreshing, what the rain does uh, in, um, you know, in causing growth, in causing, changing the very uh, environment, um, and changing the land uh, on which it falls, uh, you know, causing it to uh, uh, bloom and bud and whatever, you know, whatever is there below the surface comes out and, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit does the same. Right? We, we read about the Holy Spirit uh, convicting, the Holy Spirit transforming, Holy Spirit changing a person's life. Uh, so it is it, like the rain. Uh, the Lord Jesus in his conversation with the woman uh, at the well, uh, also uh, referred to you know, the stream. And in John chapter 7, is uh, referred to as uh, the river, born again, you know, the indwelling presence, the, um, the presence uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit going out and touching other people's lives like the, like the rain. Okay? So we see that. Um, uh, so water or the streams of water or the rivers of water um, again referring to the work of God the work of the Holy Spirit we see a similar reference in in the book of Ezekiel as well at the temple um, you know the work of the Holy Spirit the water flowing from the altar there's a river and just keeps rising um, Holy Spirit again referred to as the fire uh, fire is a symbol. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist, when talking about what the Lord Jesus will do, he said he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Fire that consumes, fire that refines, um, uh, 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 referring to the work of uh, the Holy Spirit, like what fire does. Uh, fire burns up, fire refines, um, fire consumes the chaff. Um, so, the work of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is like that. Right? 
um, he's also referred to as a light. Um, if you, you know, if you look at the uh, tabernacle of Moses, right, there was this seven uh, candles on the uh, on the candlestick, and uh, uh, the seven flames were there, and uh, um, it refers to the seven aspects, facets of the uh, spirit of God, and also the illumination, right, the light and the illumination that the Holy Spirit brings about. Uh, a revelation that the Holy Spirit brings about in a person's life. Right? So we see some of these symbols um, uh, and uh, oil is also another symbol uh, which is not listed here. So we see um, some of these symbols which refer to the, the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? Um, so the titles, the symbols, um, these point to the work, the nature uh, of the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay. So, um, if there are any questions on whatever we have seen so far, whatever we have studied so far, we looked at the Holy Spirit. We looked at the nature. We looked at the working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we also studied about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we spent um, you know a considerable amount of time on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, we looked at the anointing. Uh, of the Holy Spirit. So, if there's any, um, you know, any questions, uh, we could uh, we could look at that. So, if any of you have any questions, you can you can either post it in the chat, or uh, you know, if you uh, like, we, we can look at it right now. Any questions so far? Any doubts? Um, anything at all? No questions? Okay, so um, so I think what I'll do is let me just put up the, um, just a second. Um, let me just put up the questions that, uh, the, from the question, um, you know, from the document that uh, you had actually entered. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Okay. Okay, John, um, you have a question. Uh, yeah, but one uh, question. I think we have discussed this earlier, but um, okay. a bit more clarity on that. Um, Acts ten thirty eight. Yeah. Um, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power. Mm. Um, so what could be the difference between the anointing with the Holy Spirit and power? Is it separate or is it, um, is it no, uh, same? Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. See, the thing is, um, well, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, Matthew 3 also, um, let's just look at that. Matthew 3 and uh, verse 11. No? So these are the words of John the Baptist. He says, I, indite, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. Um, and verse 12, he talks about the work, like his winnowing hand, fan in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse out his threshing floor, gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. So, um, so he's actually referring to the baptism and the working, outworking of that. You know, one aspect of what the Holy Spirit will do is that he will, he will burn up, uh, he will... Uh, he will change, you know, whatever is unnecessary. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Right. So that is what uh, uh, he, uh, he's referring to as the, you know, the work of the spirit. So here also, um, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with power, referring to the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so it's uh, it's just a usage which talks about the empowering work of the Holy Spirit and which will result in 
you know, all the things that we see there that uh, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil uh, for God was with them. So, um, so it's just the empowering work of the Holy Spirit and the, and the, the, the phrase and the usage there, Holy Spirit and power or Holy Spirit and fire uh, referring to the work of the Spirit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just one follow up question to that. Yeah. Um, so, um, one of the sermons uh, from uh, uh, Reverend Hennet, H- Kenneth Hagin, uh, no. quite a long back, uh, it's, uh, he talks about one fact, I'm not sure if it is um, related to this, so uh-huh. talks about the fact that we have been given authority and power, okay, um, but uh, the power needs to be increased, uh, depends on the situation. Let's The one uh, example he caught was, let's say, Uh, look at a traffic policeman and he has the authority to stop every vehicle Mm -hmm. but not the power to move any vehicle. Um, Mm -hmm. um, So, for us, let's say, in any given situation, let's say maybe a manifestation of a demon or, uh, you know, uh, praying over any, any, any uh, for deliverance or any other situations like that. So, we know for sure that we have the authority but um, um, how is the level of power? Does it need to be increased at those moments, or do we need uh, do we need to do anything about it? Yeah. So, so when we uh, studied about the anointing, we saw that the anointing is something that can be increased uh, with obedience, and you know uh, when we um, when we follow uh, the Lord closely, and we you know um, so uh, we can ask for more of God. Uh, we can ask for uh, you know the the work of God to be increased in our lives. So um, we ask uh, to be filled with the Spirit of God every day, and uh, so um, so that's uh, that's something that that is possible for the believer. So which means that the empowering work of God through the believer uh, can be increased. Right. So when we uh, like when we face a, a situation like this of deliverance, uh, well, sometimes the believer does not know that he has the authority. That's you know one thing. So um, the other thing is, of course, the believer knows that he has the authority, but um, needs to walk in the authority, and uh, maybe uh, is not walking in faith. Uh, or maybe it's it's different level of faith. You know, like um, we see it's underdeveloped faith. Right. Uh, it's not so that also can be increased where we can mature in faith. Um, we can come to a level of a strong faith. Right. Um, so uh, with that, when 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 it's that, then the release of the anointing of God uh, through a believer uh, is is more. Right. So uh, I'm walking with God. I'm walking in obedience. I'm also, uh, you know, walking in faith, and then the release of uh, the the power of God, the anointing of God, is more to to tackle that particular situation or the challenge. Right. Um, uh, but having said that, I think uh, one thing we need to know is, uh, you know, God is sovereign, and there are times, there are circumstances when, you know, the the believers absolutely. Uh, Right, uh, you know, you don't doesn't you don't feel it. You don't feel like uh, you know even praying, uh, or you don't feel anything. Right, uh, you don't feel like that you're full of faith. But then you pray, and then things happen uh, because of the sovereign way in which God deals. So, so both are you know uh, very much uh, uh, part of reality. Thanks for the believer. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Master. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, um, so let me just uh, share some of that, some of those questions, um, and maybe you guys can answer, having gone through the course, right? Uh, where is that? Okay, mm. sorry. Excuse me. Okay, um, here we go. Okay, so uh, I think you, I hope you can see it. Okay, it's come up right. So the first question: Can you explain Revelation five six? Okay, I think we kind of looked at that. So um, 
that is about the seven spirits of god okay revelation 5 6 talks about the seven spirits of god and uh, i think we kind of answered that and isaiah 11 talks about the seven aspects or uh, the seven uh, facets of the spirit of god so we we looked at that so that's the first one um i think we kind of answered the second one also right uh, how does the holy spirit work in human beings right so by the indwelling presence um, by even the the manifest presence and uh, how does he work in human beings no now human beings need to cooperate with the holy spirit the holy spirit uh, uh, god is a god who communicates um, and he uh, he communicates to us in promptings primarily through his word okay uh, also you know he prompts us he speaks to us um, he uh, you know, kind of leads us uh, in many other ways right we also looked at the spirit sense of hearing seeing feeling uh, and all that so he speaks to us in our spirit uh, he speaks to us through his word he he testifies uh, you know, attests to um, the, the word, gives us the confidence about the word. He gives us revelation about the word, and uh, and then we need to cooperate with him right, to see those things uh, uh, to come to pass. Right? So, how does Holy Spirit work in these ways? And secondly, also through the gifts. Right? We saw the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, also through the gifts, He wants to manifest Himself. Right? He wants to show himself strong uh, on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal. So he wants to uh, display, put on display his character, his nature. So in that way also he works in human beings. Right? Okay, uh, I think we looked at uh, the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. Right? Uh, we looked at, okay, how can a sinning man still speak in tongues and move in the gifts? Okay. So that is the fourth question. How can a person who is sinning uh, still speak in tongues and move in the gifts? Okay. Would anybody like to answer that? Anyone? Uh, so that's the question we're looking at. Um, how can somebody, you know, who is sinning, Okay, yeah, go ahead, uh, Collins. Uh, I think uh, when a person is speaking in spirit, he's, adim he's, uh, he's, he's ministering to other people, not entirely on his life. So I think that God's will has to be done to other people, much as the, the, the vessel is not uh, living a righteous life. That's what I have to think according to what we did study. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the question is, you know, see, uh, uh, if you look at the question, it's like, um, what is tongues? Tongue, tongues is the Holy Spirit praying through uh, a believer, right? Uh, the Holy Spirit making intercession. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. So now, here's a person who is not living right, who's walking in unrighteousness, Right? Who's, who's disobeying God. Now, how can that person still operate in the gifts? And so that is the person's uh, question. How can this person uh, still operate in the gifts? Because he's obviously disobeying God. Right? He's not obeying God. He's not walking in righteousness. So first of all, this, uh, maybe uh, we can you know, take that question in two parts. You know, is it possible for a person. So here, uh, uh, I think the the, uh, the question is, you know, that person has seen this person actually walk, uh, you know, speaking in tongues and etc. So how is it possible? Why does God still do that? Right? How is it possible? Anyone else who can answer? Thank you, Collins. Uh, if I may. Yeah, yeah, please. Um. So one thing we learned through the course is um the gifts of the spirit are not indicative of the spiritual maturity of the person. So um, even if we see people operate in the gifts, that doesn't mean that they are mature in Christ. 
and another part here is um god does not revoke any of the gifts uh, that he has already given um so it depends on a man to decide um to walk with him and to continue to grow to the maturity yeah thank you thanks john i think that's a very important point right um what john said also um and uh, uh, yeah 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 collins you would you like to say something uh just i think again you know when god does everything much as god blesses us and he does everything but i think that the most important thing that he does his own will so we cannot ask questions when like god is doing something in, a, in another person's life even when we are sure that this person is sinful i think he still retains the power to do his will so i think he wills to keep the anointing on that very person who wouldn't ask questions that's what i have to say okay thank you thank you yeah i think uh, it's uh, what you share is uh, right and it's in line with uh, what uh, elisha has also shared you know romans 11:29 uh, yeah a success uh, just a minute let me just uh, i'll just come back to you in a minute right um so what uh, Eli- uh, you know romans 11:21 that the gifts and the calling of god are irrevocable meaning that he has given it and he's given it because of uh, your faith in him and he's not going to take it back okay so having said that um you know john uh, john's response was uh, to- is talking about how the gifts are not indicative of spiritual maturity okay so which means spirituality or my sensitivity to the leading of the spirit and uh, my desire to walk in the gifts etc and i you know reach out in faith and i receive from god now spirituality and christ likeness which is character are two different things right so i can be spiritually immature and uh, not christ like in my behavior in my dealing with people in my you know relationship with god i can i can be that i can be immature right i i need i and but, but the thing is that you know which is the classic example is the church in corinth the corinthian church right from where you know uh, that epistle where we learned about the gifts paul had to write to the corinthian church uh, you know we, what we see in 1 corinthians 12 13 14 because they were not using or they were not walking uh in line with god with regard to the gifts right either they were ignorant and those who were uh, uh, walk even you know you know uh, using the gifts were not using it for the edification of the body or for god to be glorified right so he had to write down and say this is the way you do it uh, you know um, and uh, it gives off from god you know it's not from man it's from god and and so on so he had to write so we see that you know we it is uh it is possible that the the difference um even we know the difference between uh gifts and uh sorry christ likeness and um uh, spiritual spirituality right um but the other thing is also that uh the effectiveness the fruitfulness of it um you know uh, is is something that we need to consider is uh, over a period of time like elisha was talking about not elisha uh, sorry collins had mentioned about you know a pastor or a minister of god who's continuing in sin now yes god will uh, you know extend grace uh, and of course god uh, wants the person to come back he's a redemptive god uh, he'll extend grace of course um, but the effectiveness of the gift you know um, will Uh, is, is the fruitfulness of it uh is something that that remains to be seen because the lord jesus john chapter 14 uh, john chapter 15 he said you know without me you can do nothing you know so the gifts has to have to be used from a place of intimacy from being connected to the vine from being connected with him uh, and the lord jesus very clearly uh, john 15 right he says abide in me and i in you and uh, you will bear much, much fruit and uh, the and by this the father is glorified that you bear much fruit right so so that's the other thing you know uh is the person abiding in christ is it the person um uh, you know the fellowship and everything is is it there because fruitfulness comes from the place of 
intimacy. So I might be doing this. Uh, I might be walking in sin, uh, but the Lord, does the Lord count it as fruit? Right? The Lord says, without me, you can do nothing. So so that's that's one thing to think about, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, success, you have a you have a question or you have something to share? Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, the question of number four, which is elected, is uh, how can a sinning man still speak in tongue and have his gift? Um, in my own opinion, I want to say this. God asks the way he deals with his individual servants. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the story of a son of Sceva, the God, the, the man said, Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? This fellow has been speaking in tongues. This fellow has been, is a sin, is a sinner. But he's speaking in tongues. And the demons ask him, Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? They dealt with that man mercilessly. You can't carry the gift of God and become to still speak in tongues. Except God wants to show you mercy by bringing you out of that way to really show you that mm -mm, you can't death with my own name. In the other hand, in, in the other hand, when you are carrying the spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, the gift of the Spirit, when you are moving with His gift, it expects you to be sinless. Because when we are talking, speaking in tongues, although we know devil speak in tongues, in this day, many pastors who are speaking in tongues but still visit Abalis, using even power to operate. Mm -hmm. They are many. They are in Nigeria. They are in all over the world. Mm -hmm. So, you can carry that. If you are genuinely born again, that is where the tongue will be relevant. And that's when you are you are, you're speaking in tongues will be relevant. Before you speak in tongues, like two or three, you are off in the spirit. So that is where the gift can be active. But if we are the other way around, if like speak from, let, let the fellow speak from now to tomorrow, devil recognize his candidate. Mm. Because we are dealing with the spirit here. We are dealing with God. Because the only language God, devil does not understand is speaking in tongues. He does not understand. So when you are not genuine, when you are not born again, when you are not, when you are, when you are speaking in that tongue and you are not really born again, devil know that you are speaking. The fellow is speaking nonsense and rubbish. Sorry to use that word. Mm. So it's not possible. It's not possible for you to be speaking in genuine tongues of God and still move on with the spirit, with the gift of with the gift of, of God, move on with the gift. It's not possible, to my own opinion. Yeah, yes, yeah, so thank you. Some, so, for uh, example, to, yeah, yes, I just want to example. share. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, just okay. a couple of things I just wanted to share. First of all, that mm. Um, mm. Uh, a person who is not born again uh, will not be. Yes. A in tongues, you know, that's one thing. Speak um, that's right. Speaking tongues, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, yes. So just, uh, I just want to share one scripture here. Okay. Um, okay, sir. That, um, which is uh, Romans chapter 8, um, verse 26. If you can look at that, Romans 8, 26. Okay. Romans uh, chapter we, 8, verse 26. Yeah. It's Romans 8, 26. Say, which, um, yeah, 26. Yeah, let me just read it quickly. Um, so, um, okay. uh, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know if what we, we should pray for as we, we ought, but the Spirit himself, the Spirit himself makes, himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot so be uttered. Okay. So, we see that um, here, uh, the Holy Spirit, is helping us in our weaknesses. You know, maybe it is a weakness of the flesh. It is some addictions that we need to overcome. Uh, maybe we need you know, some some sinful pattern which needs to be broken. Now, how does he help help us? He makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be 
uttered in articulate speech and uh, this is one of the references for one of the ref many references for the gift of tongues so when we when we say when when we study the benefits of gift of tongues this is one of it one of the benefits where the holy spirit um uh, is actually helping us to overcome our weaknesses right so uh we also saw that 1 corinthians 14 that as a believer, you know, when I pray in tongues, I am edified, personally edified. I'm built up. Right? Um, so as a believer, sometimes I do not know when it comes to making decisions, choices. I, I don't know what is, the, what is the best one. Right? The Holy Spirit helps us. So when we look at that word weakness, he helps us, uh, you know, to make the right choice. He helps us, um, you know, in areas that we are lacking. He helps us in areas that we are overcoming. Right. So in all this, so therefore, if you look at the gift of tongues, it's a, it's a wonderful gift. It's a, it has this benefit of helping the uh, believer overcome, helping the believer overcome the, the pull of the flesh, the draw of the flesh. Okay. Um, just want us to back, uh, go, uh, go a few verses before. Okay, we are already out of time. Okay. Um, you know, we, we go a few verses above and we look at this, you know, um, Romans 8 and verse 13. You know, we looked at 26. Now just go up to verse 13. It says, if you live according to the flesh, you will mm -hmm. die. Right? So he's addressing believers. And he's saying, if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So you know, by the Spirit. So as the Holy Spirit empowers you, helps you, and one of the ways he does is through the gift of tongues as well. Right? So so that's the thing. So the uh, And it makes sense because if you look at the Corinthian church, the Corinthian church was a carnal church. You know, there were divisions, there were strivings. Um, there was a lot of carnality, you know, fleshly, this thing they were you know, uh, saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, and so on. You know, There's a lot of division, fightings among them, a um, lot of clannish things. But here, uh, you know, Paul is actually talking to, them, talking to them, and he's calling them carnal. They were believers. They had the gifts of the Spirit. Right? They were filled with the Spirit. It was, in fact, a thriving, buzzing church. Um, they had a great zeal for the things of God, yet... They were carnal. So, in order to overcome carnality, overcome the weakness of the flesh, you know, we have been um, given uh, the wonderful gifts of the Spirit, and one of it is gift of tongues, which you know, when we speak, we are edified, and by which we again overcome. Right. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that. What we'll do is we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back at ten. Okay seven more minutes we just take a break come back at 10 and uh, maybe go through uh, the uh, the other questions is that okay but thank you thank you success thank you collins thank you elisha elisha you have a few questions here yeah we'll just come back to that okay we'll take a break and come back thank you